Welcome to the regular expressions section of the course. So what is a regular expression? The simplest explanation is that a regular expression is a way of searching for and finding text that matches a pattern. So what do we mean by a pattern? It's just a strategy that we use to identify text. So a pattern can mean something like three digits in a row or two alphabetic letters in a row or the letters B, C, A in sequence, or any number of white space characters in a row. It's just a search pattern. It's a strategy to identify text. And the applications in the real world are vast. For example, we may need to parse a big chunk of text and find the nested email address within it. An email address has a certain pattern, right? We have the at sign in the middle, and then we have something before it and something afterwards. Or we can, for example, be looking for a phone number. A phone number has a specific pattern as well. It's a sequence of numbers, and usually those numbers are separated by spaces or dashes or slashes or something like that. Or if we're looking for something like a zip code within the United States, we can write a pattern to search for five digits in a row. So regular expressions are just an internal language that are built into Python that allows us to identify and write out those strategies to help with identifying snippets of text within larger chunks of text. It's an easy idea to get started with, but a surprisingly tricky and advanced concept to master. There are entire thousand page textbooks written on regular expressions. There are entire uh, college courses that take place over a semester to show you all of the power of regular expressions. So in this section, I want to show you the basics. I want to give you a little bit to get started with so you understand the purpose of regular expressions, how they're written, and how they work. Keep in mind, regular expressions are common across many different programming languages. So they're not exclusive to Python, they're just available in Python. So to work with regular expressions, we'll have to begin by importing a module from within the standard library called RE. That is short for regular expressions. So right here, I'm going to import RE. RE is just part of the standard library in the same way that we have the random module, the math module, etc. It's one of 250 plus available modules in Python that are there to help us with operations like this. So on this imported module, I have a function available called compile. And to compile, I'm going to pass a string representing my pattern, okay? And right now, I'm gonna keep things super simple and I'm going to write out the word flower. So this is establishing my pattern, and all my pattern is right now is six letters in a row, F-L-O-W-E-R. Remember, Python doesn't understand what a flower is, but now it understands that it has a pattern of looking for six characters in a row, and it has to be these six. So I'm going to assign this resulting object to a variable called pattern, and below we can take a look at the type of the pattern object, and we'll be able to see that it is in fact a pattern object. The actual class that it's constructed from is called pattern, okay? So here's what I want to do. I want to take my pattern object and I want to invoke a method on it called search. So what search is going to do is it's going to accept a string and it's going to look for that pattern within the string that's passed in as an argument, okay? If the pattern does not exist, we're going to get a none object to represent nullness or nothingness. And if the pattern does match in the string that we pass in, we're going to get a different type of object called a match. Let's take a look at both of those scenarios. First up, let's pass in a string like candy. So again, Python and regular expressions is going to look for this combination of characters, flower, within this string of candy. There is no match whatsoever. So if I take a look and I output the result or the return value, we're going to see it's going to be the none object. Whenever Python cannot find a match using the regular expression pattern, it returns none, okay? Now, let's make it work. So what I'm gonna do below is I'm going to once again invoke the search method on my pattern, pattern object, and I'm going to give it a string like flower power. So now this combination of six characters that we specified in here is going to exist at some point in this string. So we're going to get a match object right here on the right hand side. You can see it here. Let's go ahead and save this object to a variable. So I'm going to remove 
my parentheses here for my print function call, and I'll just save this returned object to a match variable, and I'll print out the type of match, and we can see that it is, in fact, a match object. So whenever we call a method on a pattern object and it actually finds a match, it's going to give us a match object. Now that match object is going to have some helpful methods to help us figure out where the match occurred. For example, on my match object, I can call a method called group, and group is going to return the actual string that's matched. So within flower power, with the pattern of flower, the pattern that was identified was flower. Now, this may be super simple and super stupid, and you're saying, but what's the point of this? Can't I use something like the in operator to check if flower is found within flower power? And the answer is absolutely. This is a super simple example because we're literally searching for these six characters in here. But these patterns right here that we pass to something like compile can grow to be very powerful and dynamic in nature. For example, as we mentioned earlier, we can specify three characters in a row or two digits of any kind in a row, or three white space characters in a row, or the character R or the character Z followed by the letter E. It can get as complex as that. So for this example, I just wanna show you that this is our pattern and we're able to find it right here in Flower Power, obviously. And we're gonna dive into more advanced examples in upcoming lessons, all right? So group is gonna tell us that in Flower Power, using this pattern, regex was able to find a match in the word flower makes sense. So I can also call a method on my match object called start. Start is going to give me the index position that starts the match. So here my F character in flower power starts at index zero. So this is the start of where it matches. And if I put the end method here, it's going to give me the ending index position. But keep in mind that this is going to be exclusive. So it's telling me six, which means the match occurred between index positions zero and six within my flower power string. So if I take a look here, F is index zero, L is one, O is two, W is three, E is four, and R is five, which means the sixth index position is the space. So this is the final exclusive index position. We're going to up to this position, but ending before it. So really it's index positions zero through five is where Python was able to match flower within flower power. And if we want these two numbers in a single tuple, we can invoke a method on the match object called span. And span will tell us that it starts at zero inclusively and the index where it ends is six exclusively. So one of the powerful features of regex is it's going to search within the entire string. So let's replace our argument here to the search method. I'm gonna swap this from flower power to something like a red flower in the field. And I'm gonna re-execute the file. So once again, we're going to find a match of the six characters flower somewhere in this string. That is what regex is doing for us right now, almost the equivalent of the in operator for inclusion. And once again, it's going to tell us that what it matched with the group method is the word flower. It's going to tell us that it starts at index position six. So that must be this F right here. And that it ends exclusively at index position 12, which tells you that this white space after the R in flower is index 12. And then the span method tells you where it begins and ends. So remember, these methods like group, start, end, and span will only be available if we have a match object returned, which will only be returned if there's a match. So if there's no match, remember we get none, the none object, and the none object is not going to have these methods and we're going to get an error. So one common pattern you're going to see is you're going to see an if statement before any operation that involves the match. And it's going to say if match. And I'm going to indent this code on lines 12 and 15. And the reason that's going to work is because the none object is falsy while a match object is truthy. So if there's no match, for example, if I have something like nonsense right here, we're going to return none from the search method. And we're going to say if none, which means it's going to value to false and this will never execute, which means we're not going to accidentally invoke those methods on none and we're not going to get an error. And then when we do have a match, such as a red flower in the field, the match object will exist because there will be a match. It's truthy, which means line 11 will evaluate to true. And then we're going to be able to invoke these actual methods on that object and get the results we see on the right-hand side. So you're going to see this sometimes in code uh, just to be safe. Now you might be thinking, but can't I tell, obviously, if 
a flower is found within a red flower in the field. And again, you have to remember that many times this data is going to be dynamic. For example, you're going to be reading a file submitted by the user or you're going to be reading the email address that the user submitted somewhere else. And you're going to be parsing it for some kind of information, right? You want to find the zip code or the address or the phone number, right? So you don't know in advance always what this is going to look like, which is why you sometimes want to check if you have a match, then show me the data, then perform the calculations. But that is a quick introduction to regex. We're obviously going to dive deeper and deeper into it. But we saw that we begin with the regular expressions module, import RE. We have a compiled function available on that module. It accepts a pattern right here. We just gave it a simple pattern of six characters, flower in a row. And then we saw that we can use the search method to search for that pattern, in this case, just these six characters in a variety of input strings. So here, for example, we tried searching for flower and candy. We weren't able to find it. So the search method returned none. And then we saw that when the search method is able to find the pattern in the string that you pass into it, it's going to give you back a match object. That match object, by the way, is going to be the first match inside the string. So for example, if I added flower right here at the end as well, we're only going to see the result on the right be the first flower right here. We're going to talk later about how we can find all of them, but just keep that in mind with the search method. If there is a match, it's going to give you a match object storing the first occurrence of that match. All right. And then we also talked about a pattern we can use here to avoid errors uh, when we get a none object. All right. That's all there is to cover in this lesson. We'll continue chipping away at this in the very next one. I'll see you there.